I'm trying to have a pity. I'm saying, though, what's up? Oh, shit. Oh, what the shit? Oh. Yo, what's up? It's Ben Scarborough, and I'm uh, chilling here at Third Eye Collective in the secret room with an icon of American independent cinema, a man that, quite frankly, needs no introduction at all, Curtis Snow. What's happening? What's going on? Kurt, welcome to the secret room. Hey, man, it's a pleasure. You know what I mean? I love the setup. You know what I mean? We in the dungeon somewhere in Atlanta. <laughs> yes, indeed. Look at us, man. Hey, man. We just like, some boys in the hood. Yes, indeed. That's what I was just about to say, man. Damn, man, before we start, man, we got to, you know, it's only right that we pay our respects, man, to the late, great John Singleton, man. And just what happened, I was fortunate enough to meet the man and kick it with him for like a whole month straight in real life. I'm talking about, man, you know, we chopped it up. You know, he gave me a lot of partners on, you know, he seen what I was trying to do and what I had going on. Yeah. And I had done respect to his craft, his work, you know, from way back. You know, I met him through Snoop Dogg. And, uh, you know, man, we really chopped it up, you know what I mean? And he, you know, told me that I inspired uh, Snowfall, you know what I mean? His film. Yeah, yeah, he told me that. That's strong. Mouth. Yeah, real talk. And, man, you know, just to <clears throat> hear that tragic news, you know, man, he had our community real, you know, like this, man. He gonna be well missed, man, but you know, we gonna keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for real, for real. John Singleton brought South Central Los Angeles to Festival de Cannes in 1990. Yeah. He pretty much put, um, you know, a portrait of black life in the hood on the global, on the world stage. And, uh, you know, his legacy will live on in his films and, you know, RIP to John Singleton, man. Yes, indeed. We've actually got boys in the hood on <laughs> repeat yes, all, all day. day. There's like this button that says repeat on the remote. And I was like, you know what? I, I think I'm going to push that. <laughs> exactly. You know, I always um, favorite Doughboy myself. Oh, Doughboy was your favorite. <laughs> Man, you already know. That was everybody's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get hot and just want to. <sighs> yes, indeed. But then sometimes I'm fucking with Furious Styles. Sometimes I feel. Yeah. Feel a little bit like the old head in the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah. So uh, we're coming up on the eighth anniversary of Snow on the Bluff, man. Yes, in, indeed. In a, in a couple months. Yeah. Eight yeah. years of snow on the bluff. I'm talking about, that's, that was some real longevity for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's it been like, you know, to have that, you know, that blessing of somebody watching the movie for the first time, and it been that long ago, and... You know, to have people walk up to me and say, hey, man, I just seen it. Like, what? Like, man, I loved it. Like, what? I turned somebody else on to it. For it to still have his spark from then, man, that was a blessing. A real blessing. Because I know, I know motherfuckers who get bored so fast, boy. Nowadays, and, you know, from the music and what they show, you know, uh, yeah. patience kind of short. If, you know, you hear it one time and whatever, we on to the next. But that right, that just stuck in the Nepo head, you know, and, like, the way we done it, it was, it was supposed to do that. It was really supposed to do everything it did in so many words. If you a type of person who cry about shit like that, you supposed to cry when you seen it. If you're a person who get mad and upset, but you supposed to get mad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's what it, it was meant to fuck with, you know, motherfucking emotions. For real, for real. I ain't never told nobody about that, but that's the truth. Y'all fucked around and made a timeless piece of art. Not even knowing it. And, you know, it wasn't like we put no years into this shit or had it you know uh wrote down where we like oh but okay let me storyboard this project now <laughs> yeah no i just woke up one day met the people and like uh what y'all want to do boom they had some bullshit script i'm like no nah, that ain't gonna fly around here and i can't have my name on no shit like that let me show y'all how oh, to do yeah. it because i know where we at i know how this shit i do this shit so let me just yeah. show y'all and boom we switched up they hold everything that's why the shit 
it's really my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's my thoughts. It's my neighborhood. It's my people, the actors, all mine. I found all them. I told them what to say, how to look, mm -hmm. how to act. You cry, you shut up, you run, you yeah. sit out. And that's how it came alive, for real. And it's crazy because uh, there's uh, usually a hierarchy on a film set. And, like, let's say the film flops, then all the blame falls on the director, right? Yes, indeed. And sometimes to be in front of the camera, you got to get other people to hold the camera, right? Everyone knows that struggle, right? So who you choose to work with on a motion picture, you know, it's always, you know, it becomes like a little family unit, right? Yes, indeed, because you got to get to know these people. You guys are working so hard on a project that you realize is not going to happen in three hours. And, <laughs> and once you realize that, that's when the, you know, everything come in to where you want to say, man, fuck it and quit. Yeah. Or, you know, you rush it and then it turn out to some bullshit or you know what yeah. I mean? you lose your whole point you know what I mean that happened to me I got thrown out track a couple times but I had to regain like I know what I'm trying to do I'm in too deep now I'm a, I'm a fan of, of Snow on the Bluff I appreciate that I uh I was actually hanging out with Mookie Bankhead and Born Immaculate and we were over on uh we were on Bankhead oh, okay y'all was in the hood then. yeah and Mook rolled up with a copy on DVD and he was like boy y'all don't leave. Like, I'm about to pull up with this movie and I'm going to make you guys watch it. And uh, that was the first time we saw it. We saw it in Bourne's basement. And it, it floored us, like so many other people. Yeah. Um, you, you live in Atlanta and they, there's this classic saying that you write what you know. And so we're in the hood and then all of a sudden there's this hood movie. And we're like, we, you know, any one of us felt like, we could relate to those sequences. Oh, and exactly. It's every kid's dream to make a movie about their neighborhood and stuff like that. And so like, <laughs> usually when that happens, the, the, obviously the meteoric success of the film led to people trying to imitate it. Right. Mm -hmm. And people have tried. You've, oh man. Many have tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've influenced. <laughs> oh yeah. Boy, what? On to my and big shout out to all them folk, man, who got influenced with it. That's what I was trying to do. You know what I mean? Let them know, hey, boy, I can turn a negative into a positive. I used to be one of the worst people in the world, in real life, and I had to make a change. And, you know, it was like, yeah, I know if I can do it, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So it's like 2013 at this point, and. It was all I heard, because, you know, we're the filmmaker people, and so every, if everyone's got a hot DVD, they're pulling up to the studio, they're like, boy, you got to check this shit out, man. Yep. This is Snow on the Bluff, man. You got to check this shit out, bro. It's harder <laughs> than Snow on the Bluff. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, bet money, pull up. And we're yeah. watching it, and it's like, okay, boom, the movie comes on, low budget, yep. got some good cinematography of Atlanta, but all of a sudden they start speaking, and it sounds like really bullshit. Yep, garbage. And I'm like, wait a minute, so if if – if the dialogue and the sound is 50% of the whole movie and y'all shot it on some good cameras, why the fuck does it sound like shit? Turn the shit off. Exactly. You can tell it before it even come on. How did you even say that this was the next Snow on the Bluff and it sounds like Garbo? Man, do you know how many haters that really be saying hater shit, but they just like <laughs> got to creep, uh, they got to congratulate me, but they'll say shit like, yeah, I seen that little old movie. <laughs> oh, you seen that little shit? Uh, yeah, I seen the little No, and they're the biggest I fan. Did. Fuck you, man. And they put their bitch yeah. on it. Yes, indeed. No, they bitch put them on it. A lot of <laughs> niggas be coming. A lot of niggas say, well, I went over a bitch house. She told me you need to do what I did. A couple of niggas. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, she want you to see. She want, that who you, that who she want like, you to I be. I don't really be on Netflix like that, man. You know. Yeah. Man, please. Then I got motherfucker who will say some shit like literally. Oh, I watched a little bit of it. I really didn't watch. Are you, you kidding? motherfucking lie. You had to watch that all the way through and watch it again to try to figure exactly. out what was real, what was fake. Man, we already knew. It, it's you know like the I mean? perfect run time. Like anything yeah. over 100 minutes, I'm like, hey, you know yep. I might. Eh. Too long. Those 90 minutes. Yeah. You couldn't blink. Yeah. you get, In you, real life. So how long did it take to edit the movie? That was the longest part. I'd say four months. Of just solid sitting in front of a computer and um, shit. Tonight, like this here. Uh, that go right here, that go right there. No, 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 that happened before that. Oh, right. no, stop. Oh, no, I got something else I want to put right there. Oh, man, hold on, hold on. Go back. And goddamn, you know, it, that was the hardest process. You know what I mean? Have you come into anything uh, or before or since that was like that Herculean of a task to, to put together? Like, I know you've made other films, obviously, yeah, but like, yeah. had your experience with editing, was it, was it there before the film? 
No. It's like I learned everything at the same time, just going. Yeah. You know what I mean, just doing it and then learning it at the same time, but making other people think, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was just figuring this shit out. Where did you guys edit it? Oh, man. My homegirl edited it at one of her little studios. It had a little studio, something just like this. Mm-hmm. Um, it was over by Green Ride Mall, matter of fact. Okay. Yeah. I've been over there. They got like the first Chick Fil A ever or some shit, right? Yeah. Uh, and the last Miss Winners. So y'all might want to go take a picture in front of that shit. Yes, like, indeed. Like now, now. Yeah, yeah, man. What camera or cameras did you guys use to make Snow in the Bluff? We used like a 1080. Um, let me see. It was, it was two old school cameras with you mm-hmm. and one new school. Okay. I can't even remember the name, but they was some, you know, they weren't no high price, you know what I mean, camera. Mm-hmm. It was some basic shit. Yeah. It just was, it was something about the lenses the nigga kept saying. You know what I mean? It was something about the lenses. And now, have you seen films that are in this found footage vein before or since that, like, like I know you watched Cops, obviously. Everybody watched Cops. You know, I'm sure everyone watched Blair Witch Project at some point, but that found footage genre goes back to like the 20s and stuff. How familiar are you? Like, are you versed in this found footage genre of of TV shows and movies? No, I I wasn't at first. Did that help the direction of of the project? Because you were like, it needs to look like this. Yes, indeed. I, 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 I. I stole a couple of pieces from a couple of places, just like everybody else do. Mm-hmm. But you couldn't notice it. You're a DJ. You're just mixing it in. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you couldn't notice it. And then I had motherfuckers who were really paying so much attention to it, trying to find some flaws in it or trying to just, you know, yeah. see some way nah, that it, was it can airtight. be fucked up. Yeah. It was uh, like... Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And what's... Okay, so there's this movie made by an Italian film director. Uh, I'm going to fuck his name up. It's like Dario Argato or something. And for some fucking reason in the 70s, cannibal movies were like the thing to make. If you were going to make a horror movie in Italy in the 70s, you made a cannibal movie. Mm. And it's just about people eating the fuck out of other people. It's not zombies. Mm. But it's cannibals. And there's this film called Cannibal Holocaust that has since become notorious for its release. Because when the film came out and it was promoted, it was advertised as all the people who went to go investigate this cannibal camp settlement were eaten alive by the cannibals and then these people found the cameras and what you're about to see oh. is what they were going out there to film okay. right another one of those and and the way they pitched it was the actors and the actresses were dead <laughs> and the director of this movie is is basically taken to court at this point and he's put on trial yeah. and he has to dodge jail time by proving that his cast and crew are in fact actually alive and that they're just fucking around making a movie and this is just how they're promoting it, right? And so he had to walk back his whole marketing plan of being like, these people are dead. Check out their footage. It's on the ground. We just went and picked it up. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it for you guys. The last sequence is they're getting really close to this family Mm -hmm. and then this family just fucking eats them alive. This family is like, oh, my God. And then they just like the last shots are like them holding the camera being torn apart. And then it's like the film ends. And that's kind of like how the Blair Witch Project ends. Right. You know, yep. you yep. make it all the way to the very end. And then, you know, boom. when you were making Snow on the Bluff, I, I know like as a as a composer of the orchestra, you know, how did you decide to bring it to the close uh, where you left it? It was so many ways to end it. Right. Yeah. And I knew. Like I say, I got motherfuckers who try to predict, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, how just it was going to end from just about, oh, but I know how they going to end. Yeah. No, fuck, you don't. Okay. It was supposed to be like a goddamn a triumphant story of somebody who got them trying to, you know what I mean, make it out of somewhere or something. <laughs> and in the end, you know, blam, blam. But it would have been still like, uh, do he make it? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a gamble. But at the last minute, I had to like, I was like, I was setting it up so it can be a part two, you know, the way yeah. it ended. Like, my mother was like, well, I know they're going to come back with something else. But at the same time, I was like, to put you back on the storyline from where I was going with it. You know what I mean? So it wouldn't be no uh, motherfucker just running around with guns and just doing all mm-hmm. type of shit. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in the end, I just was like, okay, we're going to switch it all the way up. Something that a motherfucker wouldn't even think. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was just like, boom. I walked past away. that phone booth one day. I was like, oh, we had that perfect scene. Downtown that way. I just been talking, you know what I mean? Like I'm finna got down, go link up with some folk. And you know what I mean? Did that shit like that. Because so many people looking for me to get killed at the end over looking for goddamn the me to hit the big lick at the end and be rich and you know some shit like that. I was like, no, it really don't happen like that in real life. Cause I'm I'm hitting you with the real life reality. This way this shit really go on a day by day basis. Where we from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I can't speak for but you know, damn near the same area. Well, but it was just a certain way. You know what I mean? The shit was done. The show motherfucker, he about, you know, no nigga, he got them to do whatever he do. But he do try to, you know what I mean, look out for the people. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because you don't need to be these same people who hate you and kid and turn on your motherfucking yeah. ass. So you, you got to get them, you know what I mean? But yeah, that end, it killed them. So many people were like, why you made the end like that? You know, it just something different. So you can predict it. You know what I mean? There are a lot of people who are going to watch this who have no fucking idea that there is a sequel to this movie. Literally. It's going to take a lot of people. Like, this may be the first time you guys uh, hear this, but Snow on the Bluff Part 2 exists. <laughs> In real life. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it really does. It's like, you know how. Okay, do you remember Shatters? Oh, the yeah. Movie? The first one. Killer soundtrack, by the Ooh, way. Ooh-wee. Second one, garbage. Remember Billy? Yeah. First one? Hype Williams. Loved it. Second one? Garbage. <laughs> okay, okay. You remember Snow on the Bluff? First one? <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Part two? <laughs> you got to watch it. Yeah. You just got to watch it and, and tell me you know, how you like it. Matter of fact. Uh, Snoop Dogg and a couple others in there. I can't tell you, but you'll love it if you fuck with me and you know that when it comes to, you know, Hollywood and all that shit, they gonna put their little spin on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They got to. They, it no matter who you are, they gonna take your creative control no matter what. You know what I mean? If you say do or don't, they still gonna do it their way. So, you know, once they wrote the check, okay, do it your way. But let me keep my little piece, you know what I mean, of what I know you know what I mean, on my end. So whenever it comes, oh man, this is some guys, whatever. But you did your thing, bam. Uh, okay, yeah, you, know you gotta mean? look out for yourself. Yes, indeed. Did so. It's it's a it's a much more involved project. There's a lot of different cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, right? Yep, yep, yep. Everybody relates to Curtis Snow, the character in the film that. The concept of Snow in the Bluff 2, I'm sure if somebody, you know, anybody got their hand on that hot IP, you know, there's there's a million and one hood stories out there from different neighborhoods. And so, yes, like, and how do you cram all these in one 90-minute picture? <laughs> and I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and say that they're these same people that have no idea that there's a part two for, to Snow in the Bluff has no idea that y'all set up trap flicks. All for that. Can you elaborate a little bit on the Trap Flix project? Like, and, and then maybe how you gave it to Netflix, like, you know, yeah. stuck it see, to them. See, that's what it was. After I kept thinking and dreaming about the situation that I went through with Netflix, and I was like, they really said fuck a nigga in so many words. And, you know, after being around so many computer techs and you know, listening, e driving on certain shit. I'm like, okay, well, shit. We might get set up our own streaming company. Think about that. We got enough movies, you know what I mean, of our own. That's true. One day we sit around there, me and my partner, we dead drunk. I'm like, man, fuck Netflix, man. <laughs> Trap flicks. I'm like, what? Yeah. Dot like, com. Trap flicks, man. It can be the same thing, man. We going to goddamn fuck with all the movies that Netflix turned down and say it ain't good enough, we gonna say, y'all come to us, you know what I mean? We gonna do the same shit on a lower level, but God damn it, you know what I mean? Man, we had some people who were backing that shit, they're like, boy, you for real? Like, yeah, yeah, I hate Netflix, they're that bad. And God damn it, boom, Trap Flip was born. You've got films from JT? Man, from Snoop, 
any any motherfucker who done shot a movie and you know brought it to us and got them it boom, but we put it up. You know what I mean? We made sure. We showed love to whoever. I'm talking about some shit that we know is some garbage. Still put it up. As long as you wanna know no nudity did, you know no shit oh, that yeah. gonna fuck us up. Like a snuff film or something. Yeah, some shit. We, we 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 showed major love, man. A motherfucker around the whole world can't say we didn't. You know what I mean? In real life. You know, you got your haters because motherfucker hate JT. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, but shit, they're still my partner. You know what I mean? And the crown jewel sitting at the top, Snow on the Bluff Part 2. Yes, indeed. I remember seeing the rollout and thinking, that's fucking genius. Like, it's like a hit factory over there. Yeah. See, <laughs> we, we got sued. <laughs> no, man. Yeah. Did you use the font or something that they used or something? Because they seen where this shit was going. But by that time, Snoop was like, shit, we done made the money. And that shit happened. And like, mm-hmm. shit, fuck them. We ball. Did you say lawsuit? Yes, indeed. When and where and, and what happened? Man, after the success, you know, Snow and Bluff won, you know, bam. Everybody like, hey, we know, goddamn, y'all gonna follow up with something on that, boom, boom. But we had already had it cooked up. Okay, we were trying to get in touch with a couple people who had some in with me on the name. You know what I mean? Snow on the Bluff. Uh, okay, Snow is my actual last name. You know what I mean? Okay, the Bluff, that's my actual neighborhood where I grew up, was born and raised. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, damn. In the process of everything we had going on, me and my so-called partner, you know, was half ownership, you know, half of the name here, half of mine, you know, half mm-hmm. of everything for the been had. Boom. When it's time for us to make the move with Snoop, they peaked the move like, oh, but he dollar sign. Snoop offered them 75000 for the other half of the name, and we move on. Okay. They would, oh, no, nah, we want a million dollars and this, that, and the other just because it was Snoop. Hey, man, what? Y'all already done played the game, so fuck y'all. We finna still go on with it. Okay. Go on and sue it. So Snoop like, shit, by the time they do it, we'll be gone with the money. Run it. Boom. Shit. That shit hit. They seen what was going on. By that time, that motherfucker had done did what they were going to do in California. You know what I mean? The motherfucker went platinum in California by itself. You know what I mean? So he peeped that. And got them and wanted to, you know, hey, take legal actions. Sue Snoop. Snoop said, fuck that shit. Gave that chunk 250000 and got him out of there. Straight up. It blows my mind how randomly someone can come at you on some paperwork for the smallest shit. Yep. Knowing that you were there from the beginning. Yep. Knowing that you really wanted to see this succeed in the first place. Yeah. And now, you played yourself. Now you don't even know us. Now you don't even, you know? Can't even get nowhere near us. You can only see us on TV. We're still here. Mm-hmm. Right? And when they thought, oh, boy, it's finna fade away. It was going to die. They did so much hating on it. Look at it. It's like, you know, somebody had to be doing some hell of a hating for it to still be where it's at right now. You know what I mean? Somebody was praying that it didn't do nothing. And it fucked them up. You know what I mean? Like, when some people ask me, how did it? How does it keep on going? I mean, you know, how is it still popular? That They really be saying, God damn, that shit for to be dead by now. But they'll say it like that. Like, shit, man, it might be God, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a regular person. You don't see me all over the world uh, advertising and shit. But that shit, shit been got them eight years ago. You know what I mean? It's old to me, but it's brand new to the world. I can't even walk down the street, nigga. I can't even eat a hamburger in peace with my son and tell him that. Uh, you know, whatever, that's somebody walking up saying, let me get a pitch. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me eat with y'all. Buy me something to eat. Kurt. I, damn. You're a meme, dude. I mean, that shit crazy. You're like, you're like a walking meme. And I got motherfuckers who can recite the whole movie. Front to back. Yeah. I'm like, God damn, how many times you looked at him? Oh, man, we looked at this motherfucker a thousand times. One, <laughs> one lady say, you know, like, you know, you got your shelf with your favorite movies up there. She's yeah. like, uh, number one, her favorite movie was uh, uh, Night at the Roxbury. I was like, that's one of my favorite movies. She's like, her second movie was Shotters. And she said, her third movie was Belly, but she moved out of the way and put Snow on the Bluff. You know what I mean? I got my folks telling me, every time somebody come over my house, 
I, matter of fact, I invite motherfuckers over my house. Just slide that in on them. You know what I mean? Somebody who ain't never seen it before and get them just that reaction. You know what I mean? From it. And like I say, you know, it old to us, but it new to the world. Mm -hmm. And it's like it getting newer. You know what I mean? You know, in 20 years, some cat's going to come out there on SoundCloud, some rapper, and he's going to come out as Curtis Snow. Is I already a couple. Really? Yeah, I heard some songs. I think I'm Curtis Snow. You've created so many hip hop quotables in that one film alone that people are coming out with like their their own song titles with like yeah. bars from the movie, right? No, motherfucker making whole songs. I'm to my and then never reach out to us uh, in no kind of way um, in, in real life. X X X. Uh, God bless the dead. You know what I mean? We okay. never knew him personally, but we never listened to his music either. That's why we didn't know that he got a whole goddamn song that say, fucking we ball. Spelt the same way I spelt mine. Saying it damn near the same way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we like, God damn. Nobody reached out to us. Everybody in the world know who, who that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So shit. Now that, that's got to suck, right? Yes, indeed. Like when you do. see people taking their hard-earned money buying paint and painting murals of you you yeah. know you're like okay cool man yeah. big props but when you see somebody just like blatantly yeah. biting yeah you're like yeah. okay that's and called they try biting. to reach out a name yeah and the whole world know that this ain't nothing you know i'm just saying come on now i've been saying fucking we ball for 14 years straight just like the cake been baked you know what i mean just like the deal is done you know what I mean? Just like all my phrases that I we say. We just steal. That shit for real. Yeah, we just steal all that shit. I say that shit for real. And people know that. Just like you just knew that. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. I ain't, I ain't tap you on your foot and say, hey, say we just steal. I mean, yeah. I mean? Yeah, shit for real. But yeah, it's just like I got to reach out to them and be like, say, hey, what's happening? Did y'all just renegade that? Or, you know what I mean? I just want to know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, man, Curtis Stowe is coming after all you biters out there. Okay. Hey, I need something. I'm fucked up out here. Not fucked up out here like that, but you know I'm independent. But shit, we can use a little bit more. Everybody else got damn at the more. We want more. So what are the pros and cons of being independent? It like it take you a little longer to finish a whole lot of shit due to the fact you got other jobs that you have to work to get the money to support that. Right. You dig know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, shit, being able to get up when you want to get up, shut up when you want to shut up, you know what I mean? All that. All the shots. Yes, indeed. That feels so good because I've seen some nigga, boy, folk talk to him like they motherfucking dog or like they kids or something. Oh, Bruh, yeah. ain't that much more money. Ain't, ain't nobody been talking to me like that. Yeah. And in front of somebody, uh, nah. oh, you going to do what I say, and you got to get up and fly here and go here. Man, you crazy as hell. I'm too old for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm a stubborn motherfucker. So I wouldn't, you know what I mean? That's probably a reason why. You know, uh, companies, whatever, ain't fuck with me because they feel like, I mean, hey, I ain't got nothing against no companies or none of that shit. Uh -huh. It's just the point of the respect and me keeping my creative control. You know what I mean? We'll link up with whoever. As long as I can keep my creative control on something that I know how it's supposed to go, boom. I can't let nobody who don't know shit about nothing come and tell me something how it's supposed to go in my hood or in my world. Or in, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Man, I already see a Coca-Cola commercial where there's some Pepsi cats on the uh, basketball court, you know what I'm saying? And you fucking juke them real quick, and then you say, fuck them, we ball, and then you open a Coke. Damn me. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll kill them. Man, we know. That we would got be like, Coke, come on, he's, <laughs> he's right here, dude. Man, we know we got 60 million folks in all who really fuck with us, like from the 40 states and 19 countries we in just the movie itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I ain't been to half of them places. You know what I mean? But we know the movie there. Your, Motherfuckers hit us up all the time. You're in like the crevice of every hood in the world. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you know? Yo, I'm like a, a skid mark on the underpants of society. <laughs> You heard it first right here in the secret room. It's Kurt Snow and Vince Carver. <laughs> um, yeah. So I have been looking at your social media for the past couple months, and I have seen a number three next to Snow on the – is there – can we – chapter three? Yes, indeed. What, what's going on here? Oh, uh, man. So, you know, we got – so many rumors and so much talk about certain shit, you know, about the movie and about what happened in the past and 
about deals and shit that photo got signed and all that shit. We just straightening all that up with the documentary. And okay. they're going to tell you, you know, what you want. You know, they're going to answer all the questions from then on to now. And it's going you know, to explain to you why everything going the way it is and what happened, you know, mm -hmm. in that point of time when we was – at the tables, you know, with the big goddamn, you know, executives and people. all that shit. Yeah, we're going to let you know. We're telling you in that, in this documentary, what happened. You know what I mean? So they can get them get all that right. And, you know, we can just move on and keep, you know, just keep producing good shit. And Kurt is, like, posting mad updates on Instagram. I'd probably say he's, you know, might be the most active on there across the social media, right? Like, if you want the most up-to-date information oh yes indeed that's where it's going down he's live like your lives are going up man i pop in there and i'm like man it's like a fucking club in here i, I yeah i'm like it's still a club in here 10 minutes later i'm yeah. like god damn I, I got people who really fuck with me and i talk back to them i mean they know i talk to them mm -hmm. haters it might be a couple of motherfuckers who just love me so much you know and say some fuck shit but i already know y'all my biggest fans yeah you know what i mean so i just move them out the way and, and talk to the real people, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, I'm, you know, serving, trying to sell some, you know, or just, you know, if I can just feel like I just want to talk and give motherfuckers some advice or some shit like that, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm still that type of person, you know. And I know everybody go through some, you know, shit. Situation could be worse than what it is for everybody. Yeah. But, you know, shit. It's like, if you don't work, you don't eat where we from, you know what I mean? You got to try something, you got to do something. Ain't no just boy who or ride nobody else, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to the top. We never want to do no shit like that. But yeah, them folk fuck with me on that live for real. I'm talking about, if I get on that motherfucker right now, them folk gonna go to him and ask him questions. Hey, come to this city, come to this state. Well, yeah, yeah, do shout me out, follow me. You know what I mean? I don't follow so many people, I can't even follow nobody else. <laughs> but I tell them motherfucker, I follow you back, you know what I mean? We communicate with the people just like, you know, they're right there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm down to earth until a motherfucker make me mad. Other than that, shh. I was in New York around 2009, and the writing was pretty much on the wall for the movie industry down here. I remember, yep. like, getting a creative loafing forwarded to me, and the cover was like, the industry sets their sights on Georgia, you know? Fuck around and set up your studio now. Yep. And uh, so I, we were like, okay, cool. So my idea was to come down here make a bunch of cheap art and fucking take it back with me to New York. And I have been down here since the tail end of 2010. I just can't leave. Obviously this <laughs> is the place to be, you know, like yes, indeed. that hashtag made in Georgia, yeah. you know, they just shot um, Avengers and black Panther here yes, in this indeed. complex, you know, and what? Those, are, those, in the are, complex? those are two of the biggest, um, okay, so the new uh, Endgame, Avengers Endgame, yeah. we're in that movie. There's a crane shot right outside of our fucking shit. You will see it. Paul Rudd is right out there as Ant-Man. What? One day we got the email, and the email was like, y'all got to park your cars over there. And so we were like, okay. And then there was, like, the buzz because the food trucks were here, and they were like, yo, man, they're shooting Avengers. And I was like, bet? And so, like, we're over watching the movie, man, and our shop is in the front of this fucking, like, it's in the movie for 15 seconds. That's a lot of screen time in a billion-dollar movie. Y'all yeah, can't get none of the footage with y'all cameras? Uh, nah. Couldn't sneak none in there. We didn't even know it was Avengers. We oh, were just like, it yeah, could have been. Keep that shit a secret. It could have been Superfly because that was shot over here. The the movie the, the future just did the soundtrack to. And then um, there's a there's a scene in Black Panther where they're in a restaurant in Korea and they fight. Everybody's scrapping in the restaurant. Yeah. And there's a row of Hummers outside and everybody hops in these Hummers and peels out. That sequence where they hop in the Hummers was also shot here. What? So what that means is <laughs> what that means is yes, indeed. two of the highest grossing motion pictures in the world of all time were shot here so at the Met. Think about what's to come. Exactly. That's uh, that's basically what's keeping me from Los Angeles right now yeah, because I'm like, leave and they take yeah, shit, like you'll be pissed off. LA is really on some bullshit right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not really trying to go over there. It's like a bunch mm -hmm. of Scientologists and pedophiles. I mean, th those guys are everywhere, but I mean, I'm really not fucking with yeah, the I scene. Seen that shit. I seen that crazy shit. I'm just like Atlanta is so on right now. Yeah, it's a place to be. It attracted. I just was looking at somewhere that said we we now at seven point some million people. Wow, that live here. That's like up from five when I got here yep. or some shit. Yeah. Hey man, Atlanta full man. We full, bro. You yeah, know, stop yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, goddamn. But shit, you just seen <laughs> where Trump just did put all them folks on them goddamn buses and just said drop them all wherever. 
I'm talking about some real fuck shit. Man, he came through and did it real bigly, didn't he? Yeah, buddy. That man nuts, man. But I like the way he keeping that uh what the name is? Keeping him spooked. Yeah, yeah. He won't do nothing. He know he crazy. <laughs> oh, he know what's up. Yeah, I love him for that now. Cause Hillary would have got in there. Man, they would have been shot that bomb over here. Killed everybody. Yeah, man, man. In real life. If they step on you, burn me the burn if they step on me, burn the place down. Yes, indeed. You heard what Trump said? I'm released fire and fury. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? And that they were. <laughs> fury. He also said, uh oh, Mueller's on the report. I'm fucked. Oh yeah, buddy. But they don't switch that up. Think about it. By the time the report really got that on, you want to read it. Fuck it. We know they'll cook that book. When they first said it, they were like, let the public read it when y'all first got it. They yeah. like, no, no, no. Then they started down there telling him, we gotta take this out, we gotta take that out. Y'all don't took out the good shit. Yeah, we'll never know. Nope. Some prostitute will make a book like 10 years from yep. now and they'll be like, yep. I was sucking his dick and yeah, they fucking. Yeah, and I fucked around and peep. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's our existence. Like, that's what we have to put up with. Y'all yeah. had to put up with the Cold War. Some fucking hooker's gonna come out and bust President Trump like yep. in the future yep. after he dies. And yep. we're gonna be like, we already knew that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go, he was on that bus to my goddamn. Yeah, man, all you gotta do is grab him. Put, yeah. I was like, yeah, I know that way. He just ain't no shit like that. Man, we never had no president in the history of presidency who was on the goddamn phone tweeting about nothing. Yeah. Never. This nigga tweet about anything. Those are his. Say uh, what say. Well, fuck you too. You're like, yeah. Huh? He's like, fuck you, Korea. And we're like, bro, yeah. I'm trying to see next year. I don't want to get blown up. Yeah, okay. He's going to go somewhere and hide in the dungeon. Man, man. you know what I mean? Bro. He's got like, he's like the only president to have like three wives or some shit. You know, he's like uh, obviously a player. Yeah. I don't yeah, know, yeah. Man. You see, uh, oh girl, she don't never say shit. Yeah. She's really like slick pissed. And think about how bad he talk about foreigners and all that shit that she won. Yeah. Well, that's some B shit. <laughs> <laughs> They haven't had sex in five boy, years. What? Never. <laughs> I, don't believe that, I don't believe that little boy here. Oh my God. <laughs> Trump ain't. You, can't, you can look at Trump and tell that man ain't goddamn. Come on. He's man. like, how much, for, how much for the boy? Oh, yeah. I need him to look at yep. my pictures. How much for him? If anything, Trump them jerking off, man. They ain't doing that for real. They haven't jerked off country. I knew it. Violanka, what her name is? I, oh, Ivanka. Ivanka. You know, yeah. she posed nude. Uh, years ago in a magazine, there are, if you go, if you type in Ivanka Trump nude, it come up the wife, right? You're talking about the wife. Boys, yeah. If you go to Google images, there are, there are literally center folds of her in the seventies, completely <laughs> naked, bullshit. tits out and everything. They ain't took that down. No, it's up there. It's, it's ever, you know, it's like, it's what? the, it's the face palm of the, uh, Republican party, you know, forever or some shit. Yeah. So imagine all them niggas, I know they jerking all got down to that pitch. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. They were like, man, wouldn't it be funny if we elected this guy president? Wouldn't, wouldn't you? Would... Lol. Yeah. I Pit. never knew that. I knew she had a background from somewhere, but I, she was squeaky clean. You're like, where the hell did that bitch come from? Nah. But the other bitch, Ivana bitch, she, she, they, I guess she so filthy rich, she ain't, you know, Tom, she ain't saying that. After they named that liquor, you know, she had that liquor in front of it. That was, that, I think that was his last wife. Wasn't that his last wife before this one? Ivana. Donald Trump. Yeah, Ivana Trump. She was Donald Trump. Yeah, the big guy, Ivana bitch, liquor. That's her. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet it tastes Great. like shit. I'm to my garbage. <laughs> she tastes like some gas. Yeah, buddy. Dude, Kurt. I got down here, and I'm I, I'm like posting videos. It's 2010, 2011. I'm I'm making rap videos. I'm putting shit on YouTube. And my brother, who is in uh, Washington at the time, is like, man, I got He's 18 months younger than me. You know, he's he flies over here, and we Craigslist a bedroom, and we start making videos together. And basically, I'm on Columbia Drive on the east side. And we have a studio house uh, in a neighborhood over there. And, you know, a studio house is like a revolving door. Oh, yeah. There's like two studios in there, and it's just like people coming in and out. You know what I'm saying? I got a brother who's in, you know, downstairs. I'm upstairs. But, you know, it's just like session after session after session. And um, my parents were like, are you, are you guys okay? You know, you're doing fine. And we we're like, yeah. But, man, if anything were, were to happen to him over some bullshit – 
it, I uh, probably would not have been able to, uh, I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine. So, you know, when you guys are in the Vine City and handling your business in the bluff and you lost uh, your brother. I couldn't even imagine it. I couldn't even. I really hated to hear that because I didn't know it. I, see, look, I didn't do, I stopped doing a lot of shit I used to do due to the fact my brothers were getting older and niggas were knowing that they were my brothers. At first, they didn't know they were my brothers. And I used to be a renegade. Boom. Once they get bigger and they out in the street, I'm like, yeah, nigga, no. Nigga hurt me worse. I oh, yeah. I to one of my brothers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then I know mama will never forgive me for some shit like that. Somebody do to somebody and they do something to one of my brothers. So, boom. I stopped a whole lot of shit. I put this on God. And, you know, for that reason, that you know, I loved my brother so much, and got them boom. But they turned into their own man. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it was like boom. They had their own spots, their own girls, whatever. You know, we had the whole apartment complex. Become a granddad on the whole complex. So it's like Snow got this building right here. Where he do his thing at us. I got this building. My other brother got that building. My okay. Baby brother. You know what I mean? Boom. Shit, you know, with jealousy and. All that type of shit, it comes with, you know. The game. And, and, yeah, it comes with that shit. And goddamn, my brother had, you know, <clears throat> a couple haters, you know what I mean? But they knew not to fuck with him because he didn't take no shit. And they know he done got them, you know what I mean? Already done did it. They know what's up. And it just, you know, so much envy, man, in the neighborhood, goddamn. One day he got them to get into it. With a nigga. It wasn't even no fight or nothing like that. And the nigga you know, gave him the impression that it was over with, it's cool. Nigga sneak, got the scrap, came back, shot him. He was a big nigga, he wasn't no little, you know what I mean? Nigga got down, hit him like three times though. But you know, I ain't never think he was gonna die. Like, okay, this one, this the first one who get shot, this all I'm thinking, one of us gotta get shot. So got down, damn, you know what I mean, damn. Man, it was like it was all good. He was talking and everything. They said he got in the ammo lamp, boom, get to the goddamn hospital. Damn. It, it, it was, made me hate the hospital so much then. And it's like, you know, the next day, goddamn, my mama had got real sick. Like, damn. So we trying to handle. This shit was going on with my brother and see about what's going on with mama at the same time. So it's like mama real sick, but we got down like we got to kill this nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we more focused on that, not knowing mama dying for real. God damn it. On the day of his funeral, somebody come and say, yeah, y'all mama just died. Like, what? And we at the front. She was in the hospital. You know what I mean? No we way. had to handle that. And goddamn, you know, be like, you know, go back to the hospital. Like, we handle this. I be damned. So we're like, boom. So now we got to handle that. Like, this next week. Three days, like, after. Oh, they were like, my mama did. But like on a Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, <clears throat> nigga come and say, boy, a nigga just killed nobody. Like, what? You got to be kidding me. This is my cousin. What the fuck? You know what I mean? From, he just sung at my brother from her. Oh, my God, dude. I'm like, hell no. But that was the three. You know, and they say, they'll come in three. I'm like, damn. That shit got to be true, because they'll go to three. And that was over the course of you know I mean? one week? One week. Hell yeah. Oh, dude. I ain't never think no shit. I, at first, I was like, damn, shit happens, you know, but I never would have thought this shit happened to us like this, you know what I mean? To well, you know what I mean? We weren't living that bad, was we? We weren't just, you know what I mean? No motherfuckers who just, you know, but it couldn't question God about that shit, you know what I mean? So, boy, you had to just go on and move on. Shit was so fucked up. And my youngest brother, he didn't know how to feel about the shit. You know what I mean? And it was like certain shit. We He's looking to you. Do. Yeah. And it was like certain shit I can't do because he's going to follow my lead. But he done heard me saying, God damn it, we finna kill this nigga who killed my brother. 
and know we've been riding around looking for the nigga and all that shit. Mm-hmm. For him to know that, you know what I mean? I ain't want to get his mind programmed on no shit, you know what I mean? But we are not already, I always said, if one somebody kill one of us, we going to kill the nigga, you know what I mean? For sure. All four of us, you know what I mean? And that shit just was so crazy, man. But once a nigga overcame that, I was like, but I really might can overcome anything, no? Heard that. Yeah, yeah. Ain't, ain't nothing they can really fuck with me. You know what I mean? If that didn't, now I feel like I fought went out of the deep end. But I, I just, it was Sanjay holding me right there. And then, watching my other two brothers, I'm like, damn, if all of them can't be, you know what I mean, like that. Because, you know what I'm saying? Some of the jump they get caught. You, know, you go in jail for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. Boom. Now, who's the eating? Boom, boom. Now, they got free go on my baby brothers out there because I'm in jail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. So much sad to it's think about. Chestnut checkers out here yes, in the streets. Indeed. Yes, indeed, man. So, you know, boy, you had to pipe down on a whole lot of shit. And there was so much shit going on after that with motherfuckers getting shot, killed. And, you know, police thinking we doing this shit. And they're like friends of my brother doing all type of shit, but they make it seem like we telling them to do it. I'm like, hell no. Mm-hmm. He say, she say type no shit. shit. like that. Yeah, yeah. We almost got damn it. Could have got caught up and went to prison on some jail. He say, she say shit, you know, after that. But hell yeah, yeah, nigga overcame that shit. For real, for real. Curtis, that's some of the hardest. Uh, life circumstances that I've heard uh, in a long time, man. And, uh... Yeah, this shit bit for real, bro. I'm just, like, I'm shook behind it. I know we got this fucking, yeah, you know. And that scene showing at the same time. Hey, I thought you rolled one up. Sparking. What's the deal? Are you sparking? Totally. I think there's an ashtray over there. What's going on over here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's on that, that same scene. I mean, we're talking about. We're actually watching Boys in the Hood right now. Y'all can't see it, but uh, yes, indeed. we're watching the scene where Ricky is gunned down in uh, South Central. And there's just a lot of. Uh, uh, that's just this room right now. Is just... And look, that, that looked that just like the same shit we got to talk about. That's the reason why he got killed because of some dumb shit. We're looking at Doughboy like right he now. Did, you know what I mean? But he was protecting the move. Like, say, hey, what you talking about? And look at the one who get killed. Not the one who got them with the bullshit. Yeah, you're supposed to make it, you know? Yeah, he had it. The, the paper Jeff in the come. Yeah. Man, listen, my daddy would got down. This shit ain't funny. Right, my daddy died. And he used to be always trying to get goddamn the social, I mean, the um, what that shit is? Well, he worked all this time and had the back injury. So he trying to get down and get the money. Okay, yeah. Soon the man die. Paper coming in, man. You been approved. He had done been denied like three, four times. Yeah. Life's funny like that. Yeah. Oh, that look at that bullshit. Shit crazy, man. Well, there was something that I uh I wanted to say on the record, you know, as we uh near the end of our chat, and I copied and pasted some stuff from Wikipedia on this iPad. And uh, it actually pertains to Snow on the Bluff, the film, uh, the distribution, but more importantly, the preservation of the movie. Um, you have the master, access to the master, and that's what everybody wants, right? They exactly. want the raw, digital, they yeah. want the hard drive, you know, they want to spruce it up, remaster it, you know, over the years, that type of shit. So there's this company, and they're based out of New York. They're called the Criterion Collection. Are you familiar with these people? I heard of them. Their Wikipedia reads, an American home video distribution company which focuses on licensing important classic and contemporary films and selling them to film aficionados. So the, what they'll do is they'll, they'll wait for like the copyright to run out on some German movie. And <clears throat> it might be a German movie from like the 40s. Yeah. Black and white, film, all that shit. It's in a vault somewhere. But they got their eye on the license, and as soon as it expires, they send a team out to go get that film and take it back to New York and basically scan it in frame by frame, remaster it. And then they put out these special editions. Mm-hmm. These special editions are marked up. They're, you know, 40 bucks 
as opposed to like a regular movie, which is like 20 bucks on DVD, right? And um, they basically put together like a special edition, but it is like the definitive, you know, yeah. they remove all the grain and dirt from the film. You know, it's like the, the best it's ever looked on home video, right? Okay. I want that for Snow on the Bluff. The first one. I, I think that it is such a, it, it, I think it changed the face of American cinema. Yes. And, and I feel like it deserves to be preserved in a uh, library as uh, important as the Criterion Collection. That's just me, though. So, Criterion, get your like fucking that. head out of your ass and hit exactly. up Curtis Snow and get the goddamn master. Yes, indeed. Because they already know. I need a check for my Rick. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I'm serious as a heart attack. Yeah, so many people tell me that, though. And, like, be like, hey, man, it's a real classic, man. It's something for the goddamn ages, man. You know, uh, generation after generation after generation. You know what I mean? And, you know, that would be some serious shit, though. So... I'm going to do you one better. I'm talking about for real. We need to check into them, Kev. Because it's totally within, um, you know, these guys have to go through estates and families to get the, you know, to get the film and stuff like that. They could just call you and uh, work a deal out with you. Yes, indeed. And uh, literally have this movie preserved. We love to put it in a museum. So, so, so this is what I was, so this is, this, I'll do you one better, right? So the, the, the National Film Preservation Board was established by Congress in mm. the early 1900s. And they add to the National Film Registry up to 25 culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant films each year, showcasing the range and diversity of American film heritage to increase awareness for its preservation, right? Uh, a film becomes eligible for its inclusion 10 years after its original release. So within the Library of Congress, um, these films are preserved in the annals of history, right? Uh, Do the Right Thing, Jaws, uh, Star Wars, not the, not the digital butchered one, but like the actual yeah. with the, you know, people in the costumes and shit. Yes, indeed. These people go out there and they get this and they throw it in a vault because at some point they're going to have to go back in history and re reference these films right i want that for snow on the bluff i think it, it it is that powerful of a film that it deserves to be uh seen for generations and taught in schools and um you know you may have to live with the unfortunate side effect of fame <laughs> because of it but you know <laughs> yeah i know fame is a motherfucker the money so bad and fucked around and got the fan. But I used to always say that. <laughs> I don't want the fan. I want the money. I guess I used to say that too much. Uh -huh. And fucked around and got the fan, man. I'm like, oh, hell no. I got the fan, then get the money. And it, it shit depressed the fuck out of me. But, so, you know, I it, you got to watch what you ask for in life. You might just get the shit. And we're, you know we're I mean? only in chapter three of a much larger novel. And oh, yes, indeed. So you, know, you guys have not seen the last of Curtis Snow. Oh, no. He's no, you can catch me uh, in random videos. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you, I'm like Troy McClure. You see me in such films as <laughs> a whole lot of shit. For real. Well, look, man, what do you say we get out of here and like get a beer or something? Oh, uh, man, most definitely. Hey, for real, for real. Well, before we get out of here, just because we have the entire world listening in, let us know about. My name is Curtis Snow, and I'm a G, and everything else you have got going on. Oh, uh, man. Well, my name is Curtis Snow, and I'm a G. It been in Barnes & Noble, and it been, uh, like, on Amazon for approximately, like, 13. Damn near. Seven years. You know what I mean? Okay. But it was a little underrated, you know, because she, it was so much hype about the movie. A lot of motherfuckers didn't get to the book, you know what I mean? But a lot of people thought that the movie and the book was the same. No, my dear. Okay. The book is a whole nother different story about, you know, certain shit. Like I'm just telling you about my life, you know, what was going on. I mean, losing three of my close family members in one week. And, uh, you know, about yeah. the drug wars and shit I went through and, you know, prison time and all that type of shit. But it's a real good book. And it's the real deal, truth, 100% no cut. I'm talking about in my words. You ever right. heard me talk 
you gonna hear me talking when you read this book. You know what I mean? That's how it is. That's just how it's so much in my words. And you know, like I said, the books online. You know, I got my little store that I just opened. You know, it's been a long time coming, but we finally there. Okay, I got you know t-shirts with just a couple of my sayings on them. You know, other than that, fucking we ball. We just still, you know, shit that I've been saying for twelve or thirteen years. Mm -hmm. You know, phrases from the movie. You know, shit like that. Um, we currently right now. You know, um, we we in the process of dropping Snow and the Blood Part Three. It's a real documentary of you know like what happened. You know, with a lot of the situations, a lot of things I went through. You know, on the journey to get this far and to try to you know get the movie out there in a perspective, of letting folks know, hey, this had really go in the street. You know, without sugarcoating this shit or without changing so much of my shit. You know what I mean? But at the same time. You know, it's something that, you know, the streets can relate to, you know what I mean? And I let them folks know I'm really front of the street, for real. There ain't no cap for me. I was really there, you know what I mean? And, you know, we just promoting, man, trying to just stay legit, you know, and, and stay independent, man. But, you know, at the same time, you can look me up at Real Curtis Snow 1, um, you know, hit us up. We hit back, God damn it. We do features, we do weddings, we do birthday parties, we do whatever, you know what I mean? We pulling up, you know what I mean? If you fuck with it like you say you do in real life. But yeah, it was my pleasure to be here, for real, for real. You know what I mean? I love this setting. Nobody don't know where I'm at. I'm somewhere in Atlanta, in the underworld, underground. Straight like motherfucking that. It's Ben Scarborough and Curtis Snow chilling here at Third Eye Collective in the secret room. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.